This is the Wise Guy Radio Show, a podcast dedicated to the education and advancement of today's artists in the world of glass. My goal is to share an understanding of simple business principles and relationship development that you, the artist, can implement now. Starting with good habits and a solid foundation, you can grow not only as an artist, but also an artistic entrepreneur. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by Mountain Glass Arts. For the month of October 2016, Mountain Glass is offering their borrow sale, shot rod and tube at 35% off. Just enter the code SHOT at checkout. That's S-C-H-O-T-T at checkout. And for all you soft glass nerds, they're offering their COE 104 sale, jewelry making essentials, 25% off. Just put in the code JEWELRY, that's J-E-W-E-L-R-Y at checkout for 25% off. And for all your questions, comments, or concerns, just go to mountainglass.com. That's mountainglass.com. This episode is also brought to us by Glass Roots. Now entering its eighth year, Glass Roots is designed for artists and distributors who wish to do wholesale business with shops and galleries. Located at the Monona Terrace Convention Center in Madison, Wisconsin, Glass Roots showcases the works of over 40 vendors consisting of raw material suppliers, functional and non-functional art, and charitable glass organizations. To stay up to date with Glass Roots, just go to glassrootsartshow.com. That's glassrootsartshow.com. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 131. This is Jay Michael, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in today. In today's episode, we will be discussing the topic of getting established in a new territory. Uh, this topic came to my attention from an inquiry from artist John Gonzalez, uh, where you can find him on the social feeds. He goes by at Probies Treasures on Instagram. It's P-R-O-B-I-E-S underscore treasures on Instagram. And also his business page on Facebook.com forward slash Probies Treasures. I'll have all his links on the show notes. You can go check them out. And I uh, definitely like when y'all reach out and ask questions. Uh, this kind of goes on the coattails of our recent series we did on selling and pricing your work. And uh, the question was more or less about moving to new territories, areas, towns, cities, etc., and how to go about getting yourself established, uh, understanding the laws and rules, whatever. So today's question is, have you ever moved to a new city, state, or county and felt lost when it came to reestablishing yourself in the local marketplace? This episode is going to cover some simple ideas to introduce yourself to your local retailers, figure out what your local market is like, and create long-lasting relationships that will help support your business now and in the future even if you move again. And I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, myself, personally, I have not really moved ever. I've been living in the same town for almost 40 years. I shouldn't say, I guess, county I've been living in. I've moved amongst the cities in this county. Uh, so I have established uh, some awesome relationships with local uh, shops as well as in the state in general, um, but also nationwide. Uh, and that's just, you know, just due to reaching out and meeting people and what have you. Uh, but this topic's important, especially when you do move into a new area. Uh, it could be really debilitating uh, the fear of being told no and getting yourself out there and et cetera uh, when you're not really familiar with the area and the shops and the artists and everything else. And with social media nowadays, it makes it a little more easier for us to get out there and uh, get established and uh, build these relationships and get to know each other. Even if you're just traveling on the road, you can throw on Instagram, hey, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And anybody out there have a shop opened up or rent space or et cetera. You know, it's fun to, to, to use the social feeds to this advantage. Uh, so today we're going to be going, I'm going to be giving you five tips, uh, basically five steps that you could take to get yourself established while you are out and about and uh, getting yourself on the road. And it's whether you are new to uh, the glass world, uh, whether you're new to the area or whether you're just new to selling your own work. Uh, it's going to be definitely a fun topic to talk about. In the meantime, hope you all are enjoying this weather. I know down here in Florida, we've had a couple cold fronts blow through, and it is absolutely effing gorgeous outside today, uh, low 70s. Been outside, out back, taking my notes and uh, sitting in the sun and just enjoying it. So happy fall. Uh, the holidays are approaching us fast, so hope you all are getting yourself ready, as we discussed in the last episode in 130 about gearing up for the holidays, uh, getting your Etsy's and your big cartels and all your other things established for your uh, online market accounts and even if you have websites, you're getting your stuff uh, made and photographed and put up there. 
and uh, just some things to think about when, uh, as you're listening to this show, but also as you are done listening to it, you can go back and listen to the five-part series and really get yourself geared up and ready for this big, massive holiday sale we're about to have. And then as you sell your shit and get everything out of your studio, you can then sit back and relax and get ready to stock up again because January will be here before we know it. I can't believe it. 2017 almost already. Holy crap. In the meantime, make sure you guys go check out mountainglass.com. Check out their sales they have going on. They have their ongoing weekly get it quick sales as well as their monthly sales and a lot of other things going out the door. Uh, kiln sales and tool sales and they have overstock stuff going on. Uh, don't forget if you are new to the glass world and you need to get yourself a kit set up, uh, you can go to mountainglass.com forward slash wise guy and you'll see a little ad spot there, a little coupon and go to the coupon code. You put in the code wise guy and you'll get 5% off your kits getting going. So thanks again for tuning in to episode 131, five steps to reestablishing or establishing yourself in new territories when it comes to selling your art. Hope you enjoy. We'll talk to you in a sec. Right, now it's time for us to get into our five steps of getting yourself established in new territories. As an artist, we all have the ability to pick up and move to almost anywhere in the world. Having a bag of tools to use when getting yourself reestablished is the key to a successful transition. Many times the idea of having to become reestablished can cause many to not want to move at all due to the fear of having to start all over. Having a clear understanding of where your business is now and where you'd like it to go will make it much easier to approach your new territory with your product line in a confident, proud manner. With today's technology, it's easier than ever to promote yourself and your work internationally. However, the relationships you develop on a personal level with your local retailers and their customers will be a more rewarding experience, both spiritually and financially. These five steps will ease the stress that can lead to sales paralysis. These can be implemented now to begin the process of establishing and selling in new territories, whether you're new to glass, new to the area, or just new to selling your work. Before we begin, let's remember first and foremost that you must know your local and state paraphernalia laws. Every city and state has different laws when it comes to the sale of glass pipes. This knowledge is crucial to not only help you fine tune your product lines, but also to keep your ass out of jail. Let's begin with the first step, research. Locate at least six smoke shops in your area. Try and keep these smoke shops under an hour drive, time equals money. Not every town or city has a bundle of smoke shops, so this may be a challenge. However, if this means you need to travel further than an hour, do it. Once you establish a good relationship with a smoke shop, you can always take orders over the phone or through email. This is one reason why it's important to have a consistent, well-developed line of work. Once you have located your local smoke shops, it's time to go on to step two, the recon mission. Step two will give you the chance to visit these shops and get an idea of what type of shops they are. Not everyone is going to be high end or low end. This will help you figure out how to fine tune the needs of each shop. Before leaving though, make sure you take a note in your phone with all the information for all the smoke shops you'll be visiting, as well as an individual note for each shop, which you will use upon each visit. Upon entering the store, immediately take mental notes. Look at what the shop has, look at the floor, if it's a gallery style shop, if it's just like a mom and pop smoke shop, take mental notes. Ask to see products and take notes in your phone of pricing without being obvious about it. And don't let them know you're an artist. This may seem deceptive at first, but if you walk into a new smoke shop and start talking about yourself, you'll more than likely cause the employee or smoke shop owner to put up a mental block and not be as open to show you prices. By finding out the retail of their items, you can do the math and figure out the wholesale. Most of the shops will mark their stuff up two to two and a half times. Some mark up three times, but don't let this discourage you. If you see, for instance, a bubbler that's priced at $55, then you can assume that the wholesale was around $22 to $25. Really take notice of what the shop carries, and if customers come in while you're there, pay attention to what they're asking for and potentially purchase. Ask questions about the artists they purchase from and jot their names down. And this leads us to step three, talk to your local artists. 
The local artists in your area will have been there for a while and will be able to give you a heads up on the shops and what they have dealt with. Not every artist is going to be willing to spill the beans, so take their input lightly, but still pay attention. Ask about what they sell and how the owner or manager of the shop buys. Do they haggle prices? Do they buy in bulk? Are there discounts for bulk? Are they a higher-end gallery, retail, that isn't afraid to drop good money on great glass? If you're a newer artist, ask other artists if they're willing to collab. The artist can then take these pieces that you collab and sell them to the shops that would help introduce you to the area through that work. Ask your local artists if they ever do demos at shops. Most artists in your community are willing to share info compared to how it was 10 years ago, so don't be afraid to reach out. And this leads us to number four, meeting the owner or the buyers. Once you introduce yourself to your local artists and have a decent idea of what your local shops offer and what their prices are, it's time to introduce yourself as an artist to the shops. This can be intimidating and keep you from even leaving your studio. The fear of rejection can be debilitating, but just remember that if you make this part of the process fun, not only will you find that your fears can actually fuel your fire, but also that for every no you get, you will be one no closer to a big yes. Learning how to deal with rejection is going to be key to your success as a salesperson, but it'll also create a confidence in your life that will lead to other successes in other areas of your life as well. Here's how you can make this a ton of fun. Give your glass away. Yep, that's all you have to do. Make samples of all your work. No matter how big or how small your line of work is, make up a case full of samples. Now, if you've been following the podcast for some time, you'll remember that as part of figuring out your baseline calculations for your lines of product, one step is creating a, a timed sample, which you should keep for a reference. These samples are ideal to carry with you when you go to shops to show them what you make. Along with the sample, make sure you have a price list with a high quality colored photo of each item next to its respective price. That way, you can leave this with each shop so they can call you when they need to reorder or when you call, they have a reference to know what you're talking about. Now, as far as giveaways go, here's what you can do. Make pendants and spoons. These will be your freebies. When introducing yourself, make sure you keep the names of each contact in the note file you originally created during your recon mission. If the shop is a franchise or run by a manager and not the owner, make sure to get their name and contact info. They may be even open to give you their personal cell number, which will make it easier to get in contact with them, but don't abuse it. If upon your visit, you only have an employee working, make sure to still get the info of the buyer, but also create a good rapport with the employee. They can be your best advocate when it comes to getting your work on the shop. If you do just have an employee, if there is just an employee there when you visit, bring in one pipe sample and two pendants and then one pendant and also the hand pipe for the manager or owner of the shop. If you can give the shop owner or buyer one of each, it will give them a physical reference and a gift. Tell them the pendant is for them to have and the pipe is for them to sell and give them the MSRP for both. The MSRP is the manufacturer's suggested retail price, which if you did your research of that shop, your pricing will fit right in with other items that are similar in style and pricing. Try to keep your prices consistent across the board but you will find that some shops that are higher end and have a higher end demographic in their area will be willing to pay more for your work than say an area that isn't as financially wealthy. Along with your glass gifts and samples, it's important that you also have marketing material, which leads us to number five, stickers, flyers, and business cards. Along with your gifted pendant and sample hand pipe, you will also need to bring along your marketing material. This is the best way to spread the word throughout your community that you have arrived. When it comes to stickers, one thing I recommend you get made is a larger sticker that the shop can put on their front door or their cases. Besides smaller stickers for the shop customers, the larger stickers have the ability to become a semi-permanent marketing strategy, giving you a longer advertising effect when it comes to you branding yourself. If you don't have a logo or brand yet, just a simple sticker made using a high quality photo of your glass and add your artist name will suffice. There's many outlets for purchasing custom stickers, which as always, I recommend going local, but if you can't, I'll post some links to several companies you can choose from in the show notes. Along with your stickers, make sure you have business cards made. This is a cheap and simple way to give the shops and their customers a way to get in touch with you and to follow you on your social platforms. It's important to include your website or marketplace if you have one, contact info, including email. If you're on a social platform, don't forget to include every one of them from your Twitter handle to your IG account. So let's go ahead and review the five steps of getting yourself established in a marketplace that is new to you. First one is to do some research. Find at least six smoke shops in your area. Try to keep them all within one hour radius, if not 
out of the, out of the area one hour is okay. Just make sure that you can maybe set up some relationship to where you can start shipping stuff instead of having to travel or charge them a little bit more for the distance. Step two is the recon mission. This is where you actually will go out and visit these shops. Do not introduce yourself as an artist quite yet. Just go in there and figure out some prices on stuff so you can fine tune your line of work for them. Step three is to talk to your local artists. These local artists will help you fine tune your work as well as pricing and get some kind of heads up on the local smoke shops. Step four is to finally meet the owners or buyers of the shop. This is actually going and introducing yourself, uh, giving them a freebie, which is a pendant that they can wear and have, and then also a handpipe for them to sell. And it'll give them a chance to see if your stuff sells quickly also. And step five is marketing yourself. Make sure you have stickers, flyers, business cards, whatever kind of stuff you want to have that they can put on their counter for their customers to pick up and take with them. As well as make sure you get a larger size sticker made so that they can put on their front door or window or also on their cases or on a wall somewhere that'll stand out, that'll show off your brand and say, hey, I'm arrived to town. And if you follow these steps, you'll find that you'll create a strong foundation in your local community and these relationships will be ones you can nurture and grow. This can lead to demonstrations at shops and even the ability to sell this to sell work that is experimental as you learn and develop new techniques. Make sure to stay in touch with these shops monthly. And if you can set a call schedule to check in with these shops in a rotation, you'll be able to keep consistent orders flying out of your studio and help you grow as an artist while increasing your profits. Now it's time for our Wise Guy Radio giveaway trivia question. And this is something new that we're going to be doing. Uh, every week I'll be asking one trivia question. If we have two episodes, the same question will pertain through both episodes. Uh, questions will pertain to either things I've said in the show, uh, things I've guests have said, uh, maybe have you count, uh, glass questions, trivia out there in our communities, in the world of glass, maybe some kind of definition. There'll be all kind of fun stuff we're going to do uh, to see about how much you listen and pay attention and also just to have some fun and give some stuff away. Uh, first giveaway is going to be, uh, deadline is going to be this Friday. Your entries must be in by this Friday uh, if you're listening to the show when this comes out. Uh, if you're listening to the show in a year from now, I apologize. Hopefully, I'm still doing these trivia questions and that they, uh, you know, just catch up with there. But that being said, uh, this the 28th of October, uh, midnight is the deadline to send your emails in. And the idea is basically going to be doing a giveaway. So this giveaway, for this trivia question is a $50 gift card to Mountain Glass. And you will receive that, uh, basically the winner. Whoever. So basically what we're going to work this is that uh, I will take all the correct answers, all the names, put all those names in a hat. My wife will draw one out randomly. And you will win in this round a, the gift card to Mountain Glass, a little sticker pack for myself, and a pendant as a thank you for listening to the show and just for something fun. And my goal with this next three months is every month I'm going to be doing at least one trivia question where I'll be giving away a $50 gift card for Mountain Glass as a huge thank you from me to you for listening to the show. Even if you're new to it, I appreciate it. every download, even if it's just one or just even a listen, I do appreciate it and I'm hugely grateful for everything. I just, you know, again, I'm grateful. I'll get into that down the road. I'm going to do a whole, I'm just going to, it'll be probably the cheese episode I've done. <laughs> so anyways, I'm rambling here. So this week's question, I did post this on Instagram the other day and I honestly got zero responses. Uh, and again, I think it's just because of the time of day I posted this. So, all right, here is the trivia question. In episode 130 on pricing your, and selling your stuff during the holidays, I said the word etc. a lot. And the answer to this is going to be how many times in episode 130 did I say etc. So all I got to do is just listen to it. It's like a 20-minute long episode. It's all about selling your glass ideas for the holidays. And tell me how many times did I say etc. You can send your answer. All you have to do is go to uh, wiseguymedia.com forward slash 130. At the bottom of that page, that's the actual page for that episode. At the very bottom, there will be there's a, a fill-in comment page. And at the bottom, just fill in your stuff, your info there, and uh, hit send. Make sure your full name is in there as well as your email address and then your answer. And then again, I'll be picking out all the right answers, putting them in a little hat. My wife will pick out the answer and the name. And then in next week's uh, first episode, I will be announcing the winner, as well as I will be posting it on Instagram too, uh, on the Wise Guy Radio uh, Instagram page, which you can find at, at uh, Wise Guy underscore radio. It's W Y Z G U Y underscore radio. And again, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 131 on selling your glass in new territories. I hope you enjoyed. Take these tips to heart. And uh, if you have this kind of issue right now that you implement them ASAP and that you're successful. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye-bye.
Guys Got Radio Show is brought to you by The Flow Magazine. Since its inception, the focus of The Flow has been to provide a bond among members of the lamp working community. In every issue, you can enjoy great content with the hottest artists and cutting-edge techniques using the latest industry products. These features, along with a continuation of our Women in Glass edition, Glass Craft Emergent Artist Awards, inspiring gallery showcases, dynamic general interest articles, as well as health and safety information, make The Flow the leading international lampworking journal. For more information or to subscribe to The Flow, go to theflowmagazine.com. That's theflowmagazine.com.